Good afternoon, it's Jesse here, back with a little sermon. As we're going through 1 Timothy today, we're going to be talking about the power of intercessory prayer and the gospel. The power of intercessory prayer and the gospel. We're going to be in 1 Chim- <laughs> First Timothy. 1 Timothy, can't speak, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. So I'm going to read the scripture, and then we're going to pray and hop right into it. So it says this. Paul's writing to Timothy and says, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, And there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I'm telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Thanks be to God. So let's pray, and then we're going to hop into it. So, Father, just ask that you would speak to our hearts through your word, that you would make clear, make known your will for us, Lord, to teach us more than just how to hear your word. Help us to be doers of your word and apply this into our everyday lives. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for prayer. Thank you that you hear our cries, Lord. You're a good father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I have four points. Number one, the aim of our intercession, the effect of our intercession, the result of our intercession, and number four, the gospel. So the aim, the effect, the result of intercession, and then number four, the gospel. First of all, what does the word intercede mean? It means to act on behalf of another, to stand in the gap, to mediate. And so what Paul is saying is that he wants us to take on a mediation role for everyone else through prayer. He wants us to intercede. And so first point is, who is the aim of our intercession? Who should we be praying for? Because Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 2 to pray for people. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made. But who is this to be made for? It says in verse 1, be made for all people. The answer is all people people. God wants us to pray for everyone. There's no one that God doesn't love. Therefore, there's no one whom doesn't deserve the object to be the object of our prayer. All people includes those who bother us, includes our enemies, it includes leaders, it includes the lost, it includes our friends, it includes our family, it includes everyone. God wants us to pray for everyone. And he actually urges that we do this. This word urge is similar to what Paul says in in Romans 12. He says, I urge you to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is your spiritual worship. It means to beg. Paul is saying, I beg you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. The word supplication is where we get the word supply. It means to ask. Prayer means to request. Intercede, we talked about it means to mediate. And thanksgiving means to, um, to, to praise or to bless, to be thankful. So God wants us to pray for his work in the world, but he also wants us, I, I love how he says, to, to have thanksgiving be made. Because if we pray without thanksgiving, that's how our prayers, we can actually forget the grace of God. little side note, the word grace and the word thanks are almost the same word in the Greek. And it's very interesting that the more we experience God's grace, the more thankful we will be. And if we're not thankful, it shows us that we've not really understood the grace of God. So thanksgiving is really important to add as an element to our prayers. If we're praying without thanksgiving, we're missing out on a lot of fellowship and the joy that we can have with God. In Philippians 1, Paul says, I pray. He says, I pray with thanksgiving. He says in 
Philippians 4, 6, uh, he says, pray about everything with thanksgiving. And there's, so there's constantly, Colossians 4 says the same thing. It says um, to pray and be watchful with thanksgiving. There's the theme in the Bible of praying with thanksgiving. All right, verse 2 talks about as also the aim of our prayer should be for all people, but then it says, and for kings and for all who are in high positions. So he wants us to pray for our government, for America, for the nations, for the leadership, for the appointed officers, right? He wants us to pray for our president, for the Senate, for people whom God has appointed as governors over states and, and different things. He wants us to pray specifically for them because that's his will. This is God's will for a Christian. Now we come to point number two. We covered point number one. The aim of our intercession is for all people, especially for leadership in our country. Number two, the effect of our intercession, the result, and, or sorry, the effect of our intercession. How does this affect us? Here's how it affects us. In verse two, it says this, so that we may live a peaceful and quiet life godly and dignified in every way why does paul say that when we pray it results in a peaceful and quiet life it doesn't seem to make sense here here's why because we will be peaceful when we're prayerful we will be peaceful when we're prayerful especially when we're praying for others and for situations in our nation um when i'm recording this video roe v wade just um, was overturned it um, just a few days ago, I think three days ago now. Um, and so that is something to praise God for. And we need to be praying it. And I believe that result of that Supreme Court case and the blessing of that was because of the amount of Christians that have invested time in prayer for specifically anti-abortion. And we praise God for that. But we should be prayerful because prayerfulness leads to peacefulness. Prayer will take away our anxiety. God will take away our anxiety about worldly things, situations, circumstances, things in the government, things on the news, things in our families, things in our relationships. Everything he can take away through prayer. It says in Philippians 4, 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. Verse 7, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It says, don't be anxious. Instead, pray about it. Let it be made known to God. With thanksgiving, we talked about that earlier, with thanksgiving. And then it says the peace of God, which surpasses your understanding, which blows your mind, which doesn't make sense to the, to the human mind, which is a spiritual peace, guards your heart and your mind in Christ. It, it protects you. It's a shield about you. And God does that when we pray. So that's why the effect of intercession is actually peaceful. A peaceful and then it says a quiet life. Why does praying make us live a quiet life? Well, you see, the effect of prayer is that we've surrendered a situation to God. The point of praying is surrendering a situation to God. That's like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? He prayed. He said, Lord, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He surrendered his will to God, right? And so prayer surrenders the situation to God. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, it says to pray and say, your will be done. When we pray, we surrender our will to God. And when we surrender people to God, circumstances to God, the government to God, situations to God, it helps us to live a quiet life. Because when something is surrendered, we don't need to obsess over it anymore. You see, a lot of people... When situations come up, what they do is they get really angry or loud about it. They gossip about it. They tell everyone about it. They complain about it. The Bible says in Philippians 2, it says, um, Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you may be innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. 
among whom you shine as lights in the world. And so when we're complaining, we're not living a quiet life. When we're loud and brash and, and obnoxious, it takes away from our testimony. That's why God tells us to live a quiet life, to live a peaceful life, to live a surrendered life to God, godly and dignified in every way. What is truly godly is a quiet, child, childlike trust in God. And I want to have a comment here where I say that when we're surrendering things to God and when God calls us to live a quiet life, it doesn't mean that we're not passionate about situations. It doesn't mean we're not passionate about the government. It doesn't mean we're not passionate about righteousness. You see, there's something called righteous anger. And that's a great thing that we're supposed to at times have the Lord gives us a righteous anger that is not sinful for God's justice and his will to be done. But nevertheless, there is a difference between righteous anger and anger that is the result of a lack of trust in God. And so Timothy is saying he wants us to live peaceful, quiet, dignified, and godly because we trust in God. There's a difference between righteous anger and a frustration that's from the flesh. One's from the spirit and one's from the flesh. Number three, so we talked about the aim of prayer is for all people. The effect of prayer is peacefulness, quietness, godliness, dignified life. Number three, the result of prayer, of prayer, of intercession. The result of intercession is that it pleases God. It actually pleases God. Verse three says, this is good and pleasing in the sight of God, our savior. This is pleasing to God. This is a fragrant aroma that Christ loves. This is like a sacrifice in God's nostrils that he loves to smell. Prayer is like a fragrant incense to God. He loves it. It's pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior. Pleasing God is important because that's our purpose for living. Without living to please God, we're living outside of our purpose. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 says, So we aspire to please God, whether we are here in the body or away from it, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Each one will receive his due for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. Paul's saying, we're, we're ambitious. We make it our aim to please God. Because we're going to stand before God one day and be judged according to our works. So in everything we do, we're not seeking to please man. We're seeking to please God who tests our hearts. And so Paul's saying when we're praying for the nations, when we're praying for the gospel, when we're praying for his kingdom, when we're praying for others, it pleases God. Do you want to please God today? Do you, are you asking God, how can I please you? Here's the answer. If you pray for others, if you intercede with thanksgiving, for other people, especially for people in high positions, that pleases God, our Savior. That's beautiful. That's a simple way to please Him. You don't have to get out of bed to do that. You don't have to go on a mission trip. You can pray right in your chair and please God. That's pretty cool. Fourth point, final point, the gospel. This is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You see, prayer is the way that God saves people. And they hear the word of God called the gospel. That's how they are saved. Missionaries must be sent and prayers must be prayed if God's going to reach this world for Christ. You see, the next verse in verse 4, that's why God says, he, he's, he's saying that the point of our, our prayers is for people to ultimately be saved. This is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The reason we're praying is so that God would tug and change hearts. We're praying for people's hearts to come to Christ. It says that God desires all men to be saved, which is similar to what 1 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you not willing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. All should come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. He loves the world. God still loved the world. And prayer 
for the nation. Prayer for all people is the way that God reaches his saving hand towards others. If you read the book of Acts, the way the kingdom expanded was through prayer. It says that the apostles devoted themselves to prayer in the ministry of the word. They devoted themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's how the church was born. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, verse 6, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. This is just more emphasis on the gospel. It explains the gospel. There is one God, right? We know that God is three in one. There is one God, God the Father, Son, and Spirit, and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our high priest. In the Old Testament, there were high priests, and, and the priests were those who would act on behalf of people and represent the people towards God. But Jesus says there is one mediator now between God and man. There is one person in the middle between us and God, and it's the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way to the Father. He's our high priest. We don't need, listen, we don't need to go to you know, a priest. We don't need to go to a pastor. We don't need to go to a friend. We don't need to go listen to a sermon or read a good book or hear another man to get to God. Jesus is our high priest. And God will use all of those things, but Jesus is our way to the Father. It says that Jesus, verse 6, gave himself as a ransom for all. John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the testimony given at the proper time. This happened at the perfect time. This was given to us in the fullness of time. And Paul says in verse 7, for this reason, he's a preacher and an apostle. He's a teacher to the Gentiles. He was appointed and a preacher and apostle to preach the message of the gospel. So that's 1 Timothy um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. So just to recap, number one, the aim of our intercession is for all people. The effect of our intercession is a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified. The result of our intercession is that it pleases God. And number four, the gospel is explained. The gospel is explained in verses four through seven. So I encourage you guys, the action step is to pray. Pray for people. Pick some people to pray for. If you've never done this before, there's a website. Um, oh man, what's it called? Man, I forget what it's called. But there's a website. You can just look up unreached people groups prayer. You'll probably find it. There's a website where you can pray for a unreached people group each day for the gospel. People that aren't saved, you can pray. And they, they list a city or a town or a place that has not received the gospel. Or you could pick someone in the government. You could intentionally pray for someone that is pleasing to God. So I encourage you, if you're lacking in your prayer life, pray for others just start small, but get started because it pleases God. And remember that Jesus loves you. And remember that um, there's no other way to live but to follow him. So I pray this blesses you, and I hope that you're encouraged uh, in your faith. God bless.